to the perfect law of liberty, his word. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to see everybody here this morning that's able to be here. I pray for the saints that have a desire to be here but cannot be here at this time due to the current situation that we are under. So I want us to open our Bibles. And, and this is something that's not on the monitor right now. It's 1 John uh, chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 1. Uh, this morning. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 1. You get to, you get to that part in the Bible, y'all say amen, so I know y'all there, okay? I'll just be standing up here waiting for y'all to get there, okay? 1 John chapter 1, verse number 1. And the Bible says, that which was from the beginning, and he's talking to the apostles, the ones that are writing this now, the apostles that walk with Jesus. And they say, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life that was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Right? That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Verse number four says what? Together. And we these things we write unto you that your joy may be full. The apostles are writing to the church so that their joy can be full. Who needs some joy this morning? Amen. How many of y'all tired of wearing these masks everywhere you go right now? Tardy, I can't go where I used to go. I can't do the things I used to do. I can't see the people I used to see. They can't come see me. I can't come see them. Uh, life is just hard sometimes, and we need some joy in our life, don't we? Amen. We need some joy, and the apostles did that for us. They said they wrote to us so we can be full of joy. Who wants to be full of joy this morning? Amen. Well, they said we write these things that your joy can be full. How is your joy going to be full when you read what they wrote? When you open up your Bible, you can be full of joy, understanding all that God has for us, all the joys he set for us, all the blessings that we have, that no matter what we're going through right now, no matter what we're dealing with, Jesus is there for us, and we can rejoice in the fact that we have a God that knows our cares and is taking care of of us. He's watching out for you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through right now. He knows you can't breathe sometimes. You're trying to see and sucking in and sucking out of your face. He knows that already. But God is there for us. And we can have joy just knowing that if you are a saved individual, if you have faith in Jesus Christ, if you have been baptized for remission of your sins, you have a home in heaven. And not just in heaven. He's going to take care of you from now to the day you end up there as well, too. You just have to read to get the understanding. And we're not going to get it from anywhere else. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for its correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. The Bible has everything that we need to understand God's peace, God's love, and God's joy. And he also understand God's ways by looking at the word of God. Our text this morning is John chapter 14. 
John chapter 14 at verse number 1. John 14 at verse number 1. Yes, we're almost there. We've had some technical difficulties today, and they persist. John 14, verse number 1. You can always open your Bible, by the way. You're, you're welcome to do that. All right. Verse number 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, Jesus says, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that nice? Jesus goes and has gone on and prepared a place for his children. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and where I am there, you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. All right. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now, this is at the time of the, the Great Supper, recognized by the world as the Last Supper. Jesus ha has just washed his apostles' feet to teach them to love one another. Judas Iscariot has left to sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. And Jesus has just told the remaining 11 apostles that he was leaving them after spending three years' time with them, loving them and teaching them. But Jesus says he's going to a place where they will join him later. And when they get there, Jesus will already have a place prepared for them. Now the apostles, when they get to this place Jesus is talking about, they want to be with him again one day. And Jesus said that they, they know where he is going and the way to get there. But Thomas, the inquisitive one that wants to be shown things, the one that needs to know, the one that said, I need to see his hands and his feet with the nails in them. That Thomas right there, he had a question. He didn't, he said, since they don't know where he is going, how can we know the way to get there? Thomas asked, how can we know the way. Now, we're reading from the book of John. In the book of John, Jesus identifies himself through seven different concepts. He is the living bread of life and of heaven. He is the light of the world and provides visibility to the truth. He is the door, the point of access to life and life more abundantly. He is the good shepherd and he gives his life for his sheep and he also knows his sheep. He is the resurrection. Through his death, we can live. He is the true vine, and when we abide in him, we abide in him or we cannot do anything. And he also said, he is the way. And we can't lose our way. When I was in kindergarten, I was like, the, I was the oldest in my family, and, and I started going to kindergarten. And my mother had one of our nearby neighbors walk me to school every day. His name was Junebug. I think everybody's neighborhood had someone named Junebug in there, right? So Junebug wasn't more than my neighborhood. He would walk me to school every day to kindergarten, and he'd come get me and walk me back home again. And that's how I got back and forth to school. One day, Junebug didn't show up. Wasn't there. I waited and waited. Everybody left already. And back in those days, teachers didn't wait for you to somebody come pick you up. They just went home themselves also, right? So I'm just sitting there, wait, fine, I gotta go find my own way home now. So I'm walking down the street. I think I know the way, I'm pretty confident in myself. I've done it so many times already. But then I miss one of my turns, I'm supposed to turn right on. Now I just keep on walking and walking, and I think I'm okay so far. All of a sudden, things don't look right to me anymore. I'm crazy, I don't remember seeing this before, and I get lost. And I say I realize that I'm lost, okay? And I'm still five year old boy walking down the street just crying, can't find his way home. And finally, somebody finds me, 
I calls, calls my folks and gets me, gets me back home again, right? So eventually I found a way home, but, but someone saw that I was in trouble and helped me get home because I had lost my way. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants to get us home. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants us to be with him. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, not the ones that know the way, the ones that don't know the way. Did they know they were lost before Jesus got there? No, they didn't even know they were lost in the first place. Have you ever been, been lost and didn't know the way to get where you were going? Uh, the thing is that usually you are already lost before you even realize it yourself. Somewhere along the way, you made a wrong turn. And then you found out later that what must have been a wrong turn back there, but now I can't even back to the place I made the wrong turn at. I can't find that place anymore. That's because we get lost and can't find the way. But Jesus knows the way for us to get home. How can we know the way? Thomas was feeling a little lost, but he is not too proud to ask for some direction. He asked Jesus, how can we know the way? And when it comes to our salvation, our home in heaven, should we want to be sure we're going the right way? Not find out too late. We made a wrong turn somewhere, and now we can't get home. Jesus says that he is the way. And the problem is most people aren't even looking for the way. Too many think the way is going to find them. Is that how most things work in the world? Do you just sometimes ask, hey, you want a job? You just apply to get that job. You apply to get in college? Does the CEO of the company come by and knock your door and see if you want a job with him? You got to go ask for it. You got to go find out. You got to do what you have to do to get there. We can get so caught up in our lives that we fail to see what is really important. And I'm glad all of you are here today. It means you are, at the minimum, interested in the way. It's not a foreign concept to you. God does mean something to you. You can hang out with your family and friends anytime you want to and not have to come to church to be able to do it. But you are here. So it's a very special work you have done to be here on the Lord's Day today. But I have four points to look at how can we know that we know the way to get to heaven. Four points. Men don't know the way. Men don't know the way. The way is written. The way is narrow. And the way is the church. Men don't know the way. Jeremiah 10 and 22. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. So you can't just trust anybody who comes to making sure you're on the right path to heaven. Have you ever asked somebody for directions and they gave them to you and you couldn't find that place anyway? Either the directions were bad and they gave you the wrong directions on purpose and you're lost trying to find something? Trusting in men to show you the way is the exact same thing. Because in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, the Bible says, But my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts from your thoughts. We can't think like God. The distance from the earth to the heavens, it is light years. Just to get to the next a star. Man's ways aren't even close to that. So in order to know the right way, we have to stay with the Bible. It is the only consistent standard there is. It is the word of God, and it holds a true map of the way to heaven. Who, who are my readers today? All right, Ronnie, for, Proverbs 14 and verse number 20. There is a way in which he is right unto a man. Mm -hmm. At the end, at the end, there are, there are other ways of this. There is a way that seems right. Have any of you here been to heaven? If you were, you wouldn't be here now, right? I wouldn't be coming back. There is no one here today on earth that has ever been to heaven. So how can any person just know the way on their own? When you, when you go on a tour, you got a tour guide. You're following somebody that you know has been there and knows the way around to all the spots they're taking you to. They've been there hundreds. They know the way. You know you can trust in them. Jesus was in heaven 
before he came to earth. He was living with the Father. He knows the way. If I depend on my ways to heaven, I, I can only depend on the amount of knowledge that I have. I can only depend on what I know about my perception, my ideas, things I've been around. It will seem right to me because I don't know any better. It'll seem like the right way. But it's not the right way because I've never been there to show you the way. But our ways are not like God's ways. In Psalms 18 and 30, who's the other reader today? There we go. Come on, Jackie. Psalms 18 and 30. Mm -hmm. As for God, his way is perfect. The, wor the word of the Lord is tried. He is a bu buckler to all those that trust in him. So if I'm trusting in God, that means I'm trusting in his perfect way, his perfect law of liberty that can only be found through the word of God. Which brings us to point number two. The way is written. The way is written. Acts 24 and verse number 14. Brother Ronnie? But this Unto these men, mm -hmm. that after the way which they call virgin. Mm -hmm. so, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things are written in the law and in the prophets. So Paul's saying that what other people call heresy, which he used to call heresy himself also, he worships God, believing in what is written. Paul believed that what was written in the scriptures was what was real and from God. He used to think he was obeying God when he persecuted the church, but he later recognized he was going the wrong way. Everybody didn't agree with Paul, but Paul always agreed with God. So once he found out what God wanted, he obeyed God. When we stay with the Bible, that means we are staying with God. Everything about the church I need to see is written in the book. Amen? you got to follow what is written. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse number 6. My next reader is that. James. And these things, brethren, I have a figure transferred to myself and the Apollos for your sake. That ye might learn that not to think a man above that which is written, that one, that no one of you been puffed up for one against another. So Paul says he's telling the church to learn not to think of men above what is written. In other words, if they say something I can't find in the Bible, then it doesn't matter. All that matters is what I can see for myself in the Word of God. So if I tell you, I tell all of you, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. You don't need that. But Brother Ellis stands up here and tells you, well, you have to be baptized to be saved. Who are you going to believe? The oldest, the most educated, the tallest, the best dressed, or the one who can show you where it is written? The one that can show you what the Bible says, you'll know that it's true. And we can't add or take away from the word of God if we're going to follow what is written. What is written means I can't be adding stuff to it and make it okay, to make it fit my lifestyle. Right? I can't take away from it, so I don't have to do something I, I don't want to do. In Revelation 22, verse number 18, Brother Ronnie. For I testify to every man that hears the words of the prophecy of the book, mm -hmm. if any man shall add unto thee, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If I add anything to the word of God, there's a price to pay. There, have you ever read the plagues in the book? Have you read that Jesus says it's better you to cut off your hand or you or cut out your eye and you go to the hell? That's the that's thing you don't want to do. He said, guess what? Just by adding words to what I have written, that's where your end is, right? Uh, verse number 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of, out of the book of life, and 
out of the Holy City and from the things which are written in this book. So I can't take away baptism because I don't like it. Because I don't want to get off all this hair messed up. You know what I mean? So I don't want that to happen. I can't take things away from what God has said need to be done. My job is to give you an understanding of the way. But God gave you complete freedom of choice to choose the right way or another way. If you see me with something stuck in my mouth, in my teeth, on some green, something like that hanging out there, uh, would you tell me or would you let me go around talking to everybody, smiling in their faces, and say, hey, how you doing? How you doing, right? With that green thing staying out, I'm doing better than you would. Got something stuck in my tooth, right? We should be helping each other out to see what the word of God shows about the way. Amen. Psalms 32 and 8. Psalms 32 and 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way in which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. God says, I will instruct and teach thee. How does God instruct and teach us today? Through his written word. Mm. That's how we know the way. And according to point number three, the way is narrow. The way is narrow. In Matthew chapter 7, verse number 13, a brother of Rock. Jesus says, enter in at the straight gate, right? For wide is the gate mm -hmm. and wide is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there will be which go in there straight. They're at. So most of the people are going to go the broad way according to what is written. The way they're going to choose is the one that creates the most leniency for them. To be able to do what they think is right, what they feel is right, what fits their lifestyles, they're going to go in that way because that way looks the easiest. You know, those Jews started following a pagan worship because things they liked about pagan worship over there. They had some, some uh, prostitutes right there. They called themselves priestesses. That sounded a good idea to them. Well, let's just do that also, and I'm going to serve God too. That's the broad way. But that's not the way according to the word of God. Now, according to the word of God, verse number 14 says what, Ronnie? So straight is the gate, mm -hmm. and narrow is the way that leads unto life, and few there be that find it. The way is narrow. The way is not broad. The way is not any way you like it. The way is the way it's given to us from God. The way Jesus has directed us. The world would like you to believe that there are many ways to heaven. Any church you go to is fine, and everybody can get there. But Jesus says most people are not going to be able to even find it, let alone follow it. Proverbs 21 and verse number 16. The man that wandered out of, of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So if I'm on the right way, and somehow I just wander and go the wrong way again, I'm in the congregation of the dead, the congregation of Satan, the congregation that has no hope, the congregation that is destined to Gehenna and eternal damnation. I don't have the power, ability, or desire to condemn a single person, but the words of Jesus will judge us all in the end. And Satan uses misdirection to the way. He's been doing that since the beginning of mankind. God told man in Genesis 2.17, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. But Satan told Eve in Genesis 3 and 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. And he just added one word to God's word to make it a lie, to get Adam and Eve going the wrong way. And he's still doing it today. Jesus says narrow is the way to life. But Jesus says, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, but Satan has men saying broad is the way to life. All churches lead you to salvation. So just how narrow is that way? John chapter 10 and verse number 1. How narrow is that way? There is just one way in. And it is a narrow. John 10 and verse number 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So you can't just
just get it any way you want to. You can't just come jumping. When I was a kid, I used to think out that we're in school, right? And substitution would be there. You start writing on the board, writing, writing. He turned his back to us. He jump out that window, you know, get out. Because that's the last pass of the day. Let's just get out of here early, right? We found some other kind of way to get out than the door. You have to go the right way to get to Christ. Has your house or car ever been broken in before? Has somebody ever stolen something from you? What about when you're in line and somebody wants to cut in ahead of you? Now, you did it the right way. You got in line and probably slowed to it. Now, this person wants to take shortcuts to get the same thing you got without doing the work. Too many times we want someone to tell us what to do about the way when it comes to obeying God rather than doing the work and read it in the Bible for ourselves. You've got to open up your Bible and see what God says and not trust in man because that leads you to the broad way. It's not cutting in line. You still have to do the work. In Psalms 1 and verse number 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. In other words, we're not going to get away with anything. If we follow any other way than the one written in the Bible, we are not going in through the door of Jesus. If I can't find it in the Bible, then what we have is a way of thieves and of robbers. If the Bible says you must be baptized to be saved, but you choose some other way, such as taking Jesus into your heart, that's not a way I can find in the Bible. We need to be like Thomas and ask some questions instead of taking another man's word for Thomas, even as Jesus himself. Ask why? And if the reason can't be found in the Bible, then it's not from Jesus. It's another way which makes it the wrong way. Ask about what you see here today you know, in the Church of Christ. Don't just take off and say, there sure are some weird people over there. No, they thought Paul was weak. They thought Jesus was weird. But guess what? That weird way is the right way. Psalms 119 and verse number 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The ones who walk in the law of the Lord are undefiled in the way. Which way will you choose today? The way, point number four, is the church. The way, according to scripture, is the church, and there is just one way. So I like that song, right? So if you look at, I'm going to show you a comparison here to understand. Acts 22 and verse number 4, I'm going to read this part here. Acts 22 and verse number 4, it says, and I, this is talking about Paul, the apostle, he says, he persecuted this way unto the death, the abil binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. So Paul persecuted the way, right? And in Acts 8 and 3, as for Saul, who's also Paul, his name was changed, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. So men and women of the way and the church were persecuted by Paul, putting them in prison, both those of the way and also those of the church. That tells me that the way and the church are the same thing. The way and the church are the same and disciples that follow the ways of Jesus will be in his church because Jesus is the way to heaven, right? Amen? Amen. All right. The church is the way, all right? Amen? Therefore, the church is the way to heaven. If I read my Bible, amen? The church is the way. Now, Psalm 77 and verse number 13 says what? By the way, O oh God is Mm -hmm. Who is so great, a God as our God? The way is under the guidance, protection, and goodness of God. The God of the financial word is money. But money is not as valuable as our God. Money is not the way to heaven. The God of nations is military might. But this power is not as great as the power of our God. Earthly power is not the way to heavenly homes. The God of Buddhists is Buddha. 
but he is not as great as our God. He is just a man, and neither has the way to heaven. The God of Muslims is Allah, because Allah is not the same in, in the Quran as it is in the Bible. The God of Muslims is Allah, but he is not as great as our God, and neither has the way to heaven. It is written in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him should not perish. Any religious organization that rejects Jesus as the son of God is not the way to heaven. Any religious organization is not stayed with what is written, was not started where the church was started, is not the way. King Boniface III doesn't know the way. Martin Luther of the Lutherans doesn't know the way. John Calvin of Presbyterians doesn't know the way. John Smythe of the Baptist doesn't know the way. John Wesley of the Methodist doesn't know the way. Joseph Smith of the Latter-day Saints doesn't know the way. Mary Baker Eddy of Christian Scientists doesn't know the way. Charles T. Russell of Jehovah's Witnesses doesn't know the way. Jesus said, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And if not according to scripture, it's not the church, and it can't be the way. Matthew 16, 17, and 18. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjon, mm -hmm. for, for flesh and blood hath not revealed unto it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, mm -hmm. and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus said, I will build my church to Peter and the apostles. And we know now the church is the way. So he said, I'm going to build this church, and he refers to it as an it, making it a singular item. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to build the one church that's going to be the way. Acts 2 and verse number 47 says what? Praising God, mm -hmm. house, and having great favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. The church? The churches. churches. All the churches, right? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Tricks you, huh? Add the word, didn't I, huh? Yeah. That's what Satan does That's all the time. Can't add a word. He added to the church. So I can't add church is to God's word without violating God's word, right? Add it to the church daily, such as should be saved. God's way is the way of love. How many of you were, were hard-headed as kids? Maybe you didn't listen to your father. Later on, you realized he was right. I found out I cannot cool off the entire outside, right? I found that out. I was wrong. He was right. Tell my kids now, before. Now I'm I might can't tell that kids, I'm sure right now. My, my father has always had my best interest in mind. Doesn't he have that for you? Well, guess what? God, our father, only had our best interest in mind. He has told us the right way because he cares about us, because he loves us, because he wants us to be with him. It's only up to us to follow his way. In Ephesians 5, verse number 25 and 26. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Jesus died for one church. These, Jesus died for one way. He is the way. He is how we get to him through the church, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water through baptism and also by the word of God. You got to have the correct GPS for the way to heaven. GPS, God's plan for salvation. You got to see what the Bible says when it comes to obeying God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, now faith come by hearing, and by hearing by the word of God. I got to hear the word of God to understand what I need to do. And once I understand, I'm going to believe it or not believe it. But the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And if you believe Jesus to be the Son of God, you got to make up your mind to change your ways around and follow him and start going the right way.
He didn't say in Luke 13 and 3, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise stand. And once you've made up your mind, you need to confess that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And once you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, by faith you're going to do obediently, be baptized for the remission of your sins. The Bible says water is the only thing, nothing else, not prayers, not, not, not a confession, the only thing that washes away your sin. And if you have sin, you cannot get to heaven. Acts 22 and 16 said, And now by tears thou, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. If you're so inclined this morning, maybe you know you've gone the wrong way for a little bit and need to repent or stand up. And we'll pray for you today help you get on the right track again. If you haven't obeyed the gospel, now is a chance. What are you waiting for? What are you tearing for? As we stand together and sing the invitation song.